You want a lightweight vulnerability scanning solution that you can install on a Raspberry Pi? Well, look no further because in this video, we're gonna walk through how to install the Nessus vulnerability scanner on a Raspberry Pi. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and here on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you like the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section and I'll answer them. Also make sure to check the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. Raspberry Pis are the latest in lightweight and inexpensive computers, and people are using them for just about anything. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, basically it comes as a circuit board and it's a little computer and you can install extra features on it, or you can actually put operating systems like Linux on it. If you want more information about Raspberry Pis, check out the description, I'll leave more information. What you need if you want to follow along in this project, you need a Raspberry Pi 4, this is the 8 gigabyte version. You also need a memory card, an SD card, this is a 128 gigabyte version. You need an internet connection, and you need another computer to actually interact with your Raspberry Pi. Don't worry, I'll leave a link in the description for all this stuff. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so the very first thing that you have to do in order to get this set up is you need to actually get the Raspberry Pi image loader. So I want you to go to raspberrypi.com, and then we're gonna to go to software, and then you need to download this software and install it. All right, so now what you need to do is you need to take your SD card and you need to put it in your memory card reader and then put it into your computer. All right, so now that you have the software installed, you need to choose the OS. So originally when I was trying to do this, I tried to do it with this first version here. It doesn't work for some reason, or at least it wasn't for me. So I found that you can do this Raspberry Pi OS, and you can do either of these versions, so the light or the full. I'm just gonna do the light for this version. So we'll hit that. Choose your storage. So you need to actually choose your SD card and make sure that you have the right SD card selected because this will erase everything on it. So we'll go ahead and click that. Now this is a little trick you can do. If you do Control Shift X, this will give some advanced options that you can configure. So I'll expand this out a little bit so you can see this. You can set the host name, you can enable SSH and set a specific password. So I will set a password for this. You can set up Wi-Fi, you can do your time zone, and you can do all these different options. So just make sure that you configure these, especially the SSH part. And then hit save. And then you're gonna hit write. And we're saying that it's going to erase everything. We know that, yep. So we're gonna hit yes. And I'll see you when this is finished. All right, and once it finishes writing to the actual SD card, then it's gonna go through and it's gonna verify and make sure everything matches up. And then once that's done, we'll be able to launch and boot up our Raspberry Pi. All right, write successful. Now, something that you might get when this finishes, you'll get a error message or a notification saying that your disk can be formatted. So your SD card, do not format it. Remember, that's gonna wipe everything if you format it. We've already written the image to it, so we're good to go. We'll hit continue. And you wanna go ahead and eject safely your SD card and then pop it in your Raspberry Pi and then we'll be ready to start. Okay, do you remember when we were actually setting this up in the advanced options and we had that option to set a host name and a username and password? Well, you need that information so we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll put in our password here. And there we go, we're in our Raspberry Pi via SSH. Now we need to go ahead and actually update it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. And just a reminder, as this is updating, all these commands are gonna be in the description. So they're available to you to just copy and paste. All right, now we'll go ahead and reboot it just to make sure everything is good to go. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Also check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and SSH back into our Raspberry Pi. All right, now we've updated everything so we can start installing all the good stuff now. All right, so now that we've updated our Raspberry Pi, what we need to do is we need to go to Nessus and download the version for Raspberry Pi. And we'll search Nessus Raspberry Pi. And we want this first link here. All right, so we'll go to this download link and the download section here. And we wanna find the Raspberry Pi image right here. We'll hit accept. 
All right, so now that we've downloaded it, we need to actually get it over to our Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and exit out of that SSH session that you had going, and we're actually gonna use Secure Copy to copy this over. So we'll go ahead and go to where our directory is that we have it, and we'll do SCP, Nessus, actually Home Pi. Here we go. We'll copy that over, that's good, all right. Now we need to go ahead and SSH back into the system. All right, great. Now this did give us a few commands that we have to run. So we're gonna do this dpackage dash I, let's do that. And we need to do sudo on that. Okay, so this is gonna go ahead and install Nessus for us on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, awesome. Now this gave us one more command that we need to do here. So this will actually start the service. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that back in here and paste that in there and hit return. All right, it's gonna ask us for our password. All right, excellent. All right, so now we need to go back to our browser and this can be on your host system. So if you go to your actual Raspberry Pi and then you do port 8834, I'm gonna say this isn't private. We'll go ahead and continue. Now you could also do this if you install VNC server on your Raspberry Pi, you could do it directly on there, but you can actually do it on your host system and see all your regular stuff. So that's the way that I would recommend. All right, so after it compiles all the plugins and does its initialization stuff, we need to go ahead and get this set up. So we're gonna do the essentials package. That's basically the home edition. So you have certain limitations on that. You can't go scanning large enterprise networks, but again, for home use, it's gonna be good. We'll hit continue. And you do have to get an activation code. So go ahead and fill out this information, get your activation code in your email, and then we'll come back. And one more point too, if you already have your activation code, you can just hit skip and you can enter it in here. And then once you enter your activation code in, you gotta create an initial user. So we'll go ahead and do that. And more waiting, of course, while it sets up. So once this finishes, we'll be back. Don't you just love how boring it is waiting for it to update? Man, this is taking forever. All right, you ever get to the end of something installing and you're just so happy that it's done? Woo, we're there. All right, so now that it's done installing, we're gonna go ahead and log in. All right, there we go. We have Nessus Essentials installed on a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're not super familiar with Nessus or how to operate it, then I suggest that you go check out my other video that I did on a full tutorial of actually operating Nessus. Now, question of the day, is this your first Raspberry Pi project? Have you done other projects? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walked through the steps to install Nessus Vulnerability Scanner on a Raspberry Pi. One of the most important things in cybersecurity or really any tech job at all is that you have to be willing to play with different technologies and find unconventional ways to do things that are kind of against the grain of traditional ways. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.